Enominate. What is the word enominate? Actually, the word enominate means no name. But the enominate bone comprises three bones <laughs> called the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. Happy about for a sec? So this is the enominate bone. So when you are walking, the enominates are obviously anteriorizing, posteriorizing. So when you walk, obviously, with the leg, the knee, the ankle, and the foot, yeah, as you hit the ground. But in terms of pelvic, the pelvis is simply going forward and backwards. Easy enough. Okay? Now, so this will be working in this sort of plane here. What plane would this one be? Sagittal. Yeah, sagittal plane. Yeah, I mean, you go front planes here. So that's working in the, the sagittal plane here. Now, the sacrum, which is in between, all right, the sacrum, also known as the sacred bone, it's the last bone to burn when you are cremated, okay, in here. So the sacrum doesn't go in the sagittal plane. It's going to rotate on a certain axis. Now, and I've done one here, like Lupita. So from here, you can see... There are many axes with the sacrum. These are theoretical axes, but it is considered that we have an oblique axis. So you can see this is called the left oblique, going from this corner of the sacrum to this corner here. And then the green one is what we call the right oblique axis. So in theory, when we are walking, now the sacrum will do opposite to what the lumbar will do. Okay. So if a lumbar is in increased low doses, what happens to the sacrum? It will be in forward motion, which is called nutation. So when the sacrum goes forward, it nutates. Basically, nutate is to nod. So it nods forward. And no doubt, it will go more forward if a lumbar goes more back. Can you visualize that? So whatever the sacrum does, the lumbar will do the opposite. So if you have an increased nutation, it means the lumbar is now extended and the facets are now closed and the mechanic will be type 2. Okay? And vice versa, if the sacrum is going into counter nutation, I is going flat. Obviously, now the lumbar will be in Neutral. flexion. No. Okay, so now it's in flexion. So the mechanics will also be in type 2 because it's non neutral. Okay, so no doubt the sacrum is the sacral bone, so it has to be. So the sacrum governs the neutral position for the lumbar. Can you visualize that? It's not the lumbar, it is the sacrum that dictates the position. Now, when we are, as obviously, if we're going forward and backwards, but when we walk in, the sacrum naturally is nutated around, say, 30 degrees. It naturally is nutated to make the lumbar in this neutral position here. When the sacrum moves, it will rotate to the right on the right axis, come back to neutral, rotate to the left on the left axis, and come back to neutral. So it rotates right on the right axis, left on the left axis. So when we are walking, the nominates are going forward and backwards, but whilst the nominates are rotating, the sacrum is rotating on its own axis here. Now, if the sacrum rotates to the left, which way will the lumbar rotate if it's going to the opposite? To the right, okay? And then the lumbar will go to the right, but the forex will now go to the left. It is like the snake in the grass, all right? If you just watch how it moves, things like that. It's like saying, like a cog in a wheel, okay? So if you've got cogs, yeah? so if the cog's going this way, <laughs> it's going to drive the next cog the opposite way, isn't it? Okay, and then this one's going to drive it that way. So the first one and the third one is going to go the same way, but the second one is going to go in the opposite way. Can you visualize that? Yeah, the spine is almost exactly the same. There's also a guy called Grakovetsky, Serge Grakovetsky, and he simply said that it is possible to walk without legs and without arms. And on YouTube, he has a video from 1988, it's like the Grakovetsky video, and he shows an amputee walking without arms and without legs, on his ischial tuberosities. And he says that the engine of propulsion is from the spine, and he calls it the spinal engine. All right, in my book, I talk about him. Yeah, I'm not saying you need to buy his book, because it's, the, I think it's about 250 for that book. Um, but um, you don't need it. Yeah, if you just type in those words and look at the videos, you should get enough visually, yeah, what you read without spending any money. Yeah, so from there. But he says, yeah, the arms and the legs are instruments of expression. So the, the motion is coming from the spine, and the spine is an engine. And it's working by the type 1 mechanics. Okay, so when the enormous, it's like the drive cogs. Okay, so when the legs, well, when the, and the pelvis is moving rather than the legs. Okay, when the pelvis is moving, it's driving the sacrum to move. The sacrum drives the lumbar to move. The lumbar drives the thorax to move. Okay, and obviously the arms on motion is increasing the propulsion of the engine. Yeah, things like that. So if we have spinal pathologies yeah, within, we've got fusion within or incorrect positioning within, yeah, then obviously we don't have a natural motion of the spine. Now, 
when I side bend, so for instance, if I side bend to my left, if I was to feel my lumbar erector, let's say I'm hyperlordotic and I go into hyperflexion, so I'm trying to pivot between the two. If I feel my lumbar and side bend to my left, I will feel a fullness on this muscle to the right. It's not because it's in, a, it's in a state of contracture. It is because it is being pushed by the transverse processes because as I side bend to the left, it is inducing rotation to the right because it is type 1 mechanics because I'm in neutral. Now, if I side bend to my right and I feel my muscle, I feel this muscle fuller compared to this one, which is softer. Why? Because the TPs are being pushed and the muscle is being pushed away. Can you visualize that? So that is what is known as a type 1 mechanics. Now, can you just try that for a sec? Maybe just stand for a, for a 30 seconds. 